Welcome to Knit Together with Kim and Jana. I'm Kim. And I'm Jana. And here we are back at Pick Up Every Stitch. In Mount Kisco, New York. Yes. Thank you again and again. I know we sound like, I always think this, we sound like broken records, but um, this generation might not know what a broken record <laughs> sounds like. What's a record? Um, but yeah, we sound like broken records, but we're so grateful to Karen and Felicia for allowing us to continue to film here. It just makes it so much easier mm -hmm. and we have this beautiful background. And we don't have to clean our houses. <laughs> exactly. Nice. Yeah, it is really nice. And we have Michaela back this time. Yay. Yay. Um, a lot of you said the sound was better and she even came again. I didn't tell you this. She came to my house, volunteered to come to my house early today. And she had been doing research about our um, uh, wireless mics mm -hmm. and uh, wanted to do some testing at our house. Oh, nice. So she did a few tests there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're just so grateful. Right now we're so grateful that she doesn't have a full-time job because she <laughs> can still do this. Um, but if anybody's in the New York area and knows of a film, TV, or video production position, I don't know really what she's looking for, but um, let us know because she's amazing. Yeah. Um, the reason she doesn't have a job here is because um, she and her husband moved here not too long ago. So, anyway, but we're happy we can hire her yes. to help us out. So grateful. <laughs> it's really awesome. Uh, anything else before mm. we get started? Like, just chatting? Yeah. I just got back from Texas. Yes. Yeah. We brought my, my dad, my 90-year-old dad, so that was an adventure. <laughs> he did really well. Um, thank you to Delta Airlines for your wheelchair service because I don't think we um, would have made it without that. So. That's a non-paid thank you. <laughs> yeah, non-paid thank you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, we had a great time. We always get off the airplane and go straight to get something to eat. I because, think that's so funny. Barbecue, yeah, right? Yeah, we did barbecue this time. <laughs> um, we actually bring our suitcases to the restaurant, which is kind of humorous. <laughs> So yeah, we're all, we're always starving because we leave the house early in the morning, you know. And airplane food is yeah. Definitely... But this time we got to um, because we have my dad. We parked in the handicap parking, so that was that was nice for all of us. So mm -hmm. yeah, he did really well. It was a big adventure for sure. Yeah. But he got to meet his youngest great granddaughter, mm -hmm. um, my son's daughter that you made the sweater and the bonnet for. So that was really sweet. And I tried to get pictures of him with all of his grand great grandchildren. So yeah, it was really great. That's so fun. And um, that was, was that the trip you were supposed to take the weekend mm -hmm. of Bowman Live, but got, then you got sick? Right, then I got the flu. Yeah. yeah. And my granddaughter had a dress rehearsal for her, her dance thing. She's so yeah. talented. And I saw a video, right? The heel stretch? Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. She's really... I didn't know what it was called, but Kim's like, oh, her heel stretch is amazing. I was like, oh, okay. Is that when she lifted her leg really high in yep. the air? Yeah, she kind of held the, the bottom of her foot. Yeah. And, oh, it was amazing. And she'll be six, and it's just, oh my goodness, the cutest thing. So, really adorable. Yeah, we had a great time. We had basketball, soccer, and dance. All the things. All the things. All the things that you miss because you live eating, up here. No knitting. <laughs> Well, I did actually work on the hem of my Oslo on the airplane, but um, yeah, not a lot of knitting and no trips to the McKinney Knittery. Mm -hmm. so next time. Next time. Um, and they always say, tell us ahead of time. And I you just, know. It's kind of like spur of the moment you decide to go, right? Yeah. At this time we did rent a car, but you know, it's an hour-ish away, so and I would have loved to go, but mm -hmm. next time, yeah. And so because Jonna then delayed her Texas trip, um, well, she missed Bognet Live because she was sick, mm -hmm. so uh, we've already talked about this, but I, I think we have. Yes, we have. I was roommates. I shared the hotel room with Pat, mm -hmm. our, our, our bestie. Like our, our OG. Yeah, uh, I'm not even going to say viewer and member now. Yeah. She's our bestie. Yeah. And I really wanted to film a Vognet Live recap, but... Life I, is, I wasn't there. <laughs> but Jonna wasn't there, and she wasn't going to be here to film it, so I, mm. I just kept thinking about it and thinking about it. But all of a sudden, I had this idea, why don't I ask Pat to film it with me? And she said yes, yeah. and I really didn't give her much notice, just a couple of days. <laughs> and uh, so I typed up my notes, I sent them to her, and we figured out a setup, because so obviously she lives in Maryland, so we had to figure out a setup and I had to learn how to edit it so we could be side by side. Mm -hmm. One thing I realized, didn't think about it beforehand, but when we were talking about things we had and we held them up mm -hmm. next to us, when we had the side by side videos, it cuts off the extra space on either side of our head. So we would hold things up and you couldn't see the thing. So then I figured out how to then 
and just switch it to just the person who's talking on the screen. Yeah, I felt so accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it, and it actually turned out to be a really long video. It was like an hour and 40 minutes, but um, we aired it uh, just a couple days ago. And she's an amazing knitter, and she's just the sweetest, most encouraging, happy, she's always happy mm -hmm. um, person, so. Yeah, I even asked her, because normally Jonna does all the show notes, but why would I have ask you to do them when you weren't even there? <laughs> I would have done them. Yeah, so I did my show notes, and then Pat, I asked her if she could just send me the links Aww. to hers, and she also said, should I do timestamps too? <laughs> I said, sure. Nice. Yeah, oh, do, cool. yeah do the timestamps. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much, Pat. And thank she was amazing. Pat was amazing. Not yeah. that this is rocket science. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, but I mean, she was very natural, and because we know each other so well now, right? Yeah, it yeah. was fun. Good, but we missed you. Oh, well, we I had you guys. we had flat Jonna there. Yeah, just for, <laughs> just for kicks. I know. I was definitely lying in bed, having you know, having some FOMO, but yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was that. And then the only other little, well, two more little things. Uh, we're really like in the throes of planning our Italy trip, right? Yes, we're both going. Two. Uh, to the Dolomites, to the Mayak Hoi Locatelli retreat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my husband is super excited to go. I, you know, I don't think, I would have loved to go, but it was really my husband. It was kind of your husband, yes, too. Yes, yes. Who are really interested in going. Your husband, because you've been before, mm -hmm. and my husband, because he's Italian, and after, you know, hearing your experience and the wine and the hiking and all that, the Michelin you know. star chef activities. Yeah, and the foraging, which yes. is right right up my alley yeah. let's forage <laughs> oh, they're doing it again yeah so I'm, I'm really excited about the hiking too yeah so it's really fun and I'm combining my trip um, I'll get to we'll get to Milan a couple of days early so that we can sleep off the mm -hmm. jet lag mm -hmm. and then we are going to the retreat and then after the retreat we're gonna head back to the Milan airport stay one night there and then take a plane to Bordeaux so we mm. can visit our son and daughter-in-law and grandchildren in oh, Bordeaux for so a week nice. yeah and you're lengthening gonna, yours yeah we're gonna stay a couple days and go to Lake Como yes yes so fun yeah. anyway so that's really exciting to yep. really start planning that mm -hmm. so fun that's in June have you met Hovi before mm -hmm. I'm sure I've seen her I don't know that I've actually met her okay so I remember thinking Oh, she knows. She someone told me. Oh, she knows who you are. I was like, she does. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I'm really excited to knit one of her patterns. I I did knit the super simple summer sweater. Mm -hmm. Um. And you were a I was new, a, new, I was new, a new knitter. knitter and, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I have another name for that S S S S sweater. Um. And it's no fault of the pattern. It was just the counting and the stripes and the short rows and I made it like six times too big and I ripped the whole thing out. Did you? I did. Oh wow. I did. Um, that was back before I really tensioned the yarn in my right hand around my pinky finger and it was just ginormous. I think I ended up making the X, whatever the smallest size was, I ended up re-knitting it in smallest size. I remember because my, I was sitting in the back seat of the car and we were going to see a movie. I don't know which movie it was with my daughter and my son-in-law and my husband was driving and it was so painful to rip that thing out mm -hmm. that I just, I did it in the car on the way to the movies and we just chatted and I just did it mindlessly, um, you know, to ease, ease the trauma a bit. <laughs> but obviously um, it was the right thing to do and I, I do wear that sweater. It's very cozy. It's a very um, luxurious sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. It's a bougie sweatshirt for sure because I used Mayak Medium and it's just incredibly soft. It's like cashmere. And it's got stripes. I did multicolored stripes. You could stripes. totally bring that to the retreat. Yeah. For the cool nights. Yeah. I'm, it, the gauge is still it's my really and loose. Hobie. I wish, I, I have fantasies about re-knitting that thing again, but I have so many other things I want to knit. But the gauge is definitely loose mm -hmm. because the, everyone here made it and theirs are, you know, the gauge is prettier, I guess. You were a much looser knitter there. Than. I was. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing because... Um, a Sarah from It's a Sarah, she decided that she, she didn't want to... She always wanna, makes you laugh. Yeah, she didn't want to use the word loose anymore. Oh, I'm right. a loose knitter. I'm loose. <laughs> like a floozy. Yeah, a floozy. <laughs> um, so now she says, I'm a relaxed knitter. And it's just it's okay. just really cute. You know, obviously English is her second language. And so, <laughs> you know, um, the meanings of words, you know, if you look them up in the dictionary, it has all the meanings, right? right? So anyway, I thought it was cute. So uh -oh. whenever you say... 
Oh, this is why I never, <laughs> never pull from the center. And I know that there are like, oh, that's pretty. They're dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted by a very, is that the, the Ann Venthal? Super Celine. Super Celine. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Karen just walked <laughs> well, around the corner yeah. with a half a half finished, finished sweater needles on. hanging everywhere. Um, maybe we'll t force when you it take it take off, you have to bring it over here so yeah. we can show. Um, this was an easy fix. See, oh. I'm still going to okay. be a center well, ball puller. Rarely happens to me, but I know that there are like dedicated center pullers and outside ball pullers. But, but my, I, my my yarn barf interrupted what you were saying. I'm yeah, so sorry. I don't know. I don't know what I was saying. I was also distracted by the pretty sweater. Like, ooh, ooh. I know. Ooh. <laughs> sorry. Usually it's dogs going by. The, oh, here it comes right now. Usually it's dogs going by the door. Oh, I love this, this in, low contrast. Oh, this is in the Eco Soft. No, this is Snuff Nook. Oh, it's Snuff Nook, yeah. but on a like a denser gauge, a tighter gauge. What size needles? I don't know. What does it say? Wow. Oh, it's just. Seven, six, seven? It's just squishy oh. and soft. And so, Eight. what's it called again? Neat. Snuff Nook. Oh, this is a Super Celine sweater by Anne Venzel. Yeah, I just love the low contrast. Mm, yeah, it's yeah, really lovely. It's really, really beautiful. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Another unplanned addition to the yeah. Yeah. podcast. Yeah, I know we have so much to talk about. We have a lot of a lot of little things. A lot of, Do you want to just talk about these first, since sure. we're kind of talking about here? Okay. Um, so, Karen has made a bunch of these hats, these bucket hats, and this is the pattern called Bucky. And it's interesting how the the yarn felts, the different uh, kinds of yarns that mm -hmm. she used. One of them is very, very stiff, like it's probably bulletproof. This one's Here's probably another. definitely rainproof. Another version. Yeah. So um, this is Bucky by yeah. the Felted Hat by D A K N I T Designs. Done it. Okay. Designs. Okay. All right. I'm gonna. We're gonna go with that pronunciation. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Dan it. Dan it. Okay. Dan it. There you go. We were corrected. Okay. All right. I love it. We that we have the. People behind the curtain. Right. <laughs> like the Wizard of Oz. Exactly. And then the sweater here, the cardigan, is the um, is that mine? Instant Gratification by Minimi Knit, M-I-N-I-M-I -I -I Knit Design. And it's on a nice large needle, a heavier weight yarn. And Karen is wearing a black one right now. This is chocolate brown. You probably can't see mm. the details very much. It's I did really take a soft. picture, hopefully. And we'll put the yarn... Um, and the patterns in the show notes. Yes. Yes. And we'll, we also include timestamps so you can skip ahead. Yes, if you yeah. don't want to hear all the chatter. Yeah. And then which one is Tanaka by Junko? This one. Okamoto. This one. There you go. It's beautiful. Yep. Another relatively low contrast except for that mm -hmm. little mustard. Mm -hmm. Is it green or mustard? It's similar to this, actually. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind pea, of that. Pea, greenish yellow. Yeah. Um, and that looks like fairly easy color work, and it's a really large also needle. Chunky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was here last Wednesday with um, Kim from the Knitting Posse, and she bought yarn for that. <gasps> nice. Yeah. So. Speaking of the Knitting Posse, I just mm -hmm. got an email from Pick Up Every Stitch, and Kate from the Knitting Posse will be teaching a sweater class here. Oh, fun. Yeah. Um, is learning how to knit a sweater from beginning to end. So if you're oh, a beginner wow. and you're in this area, definitely. And she does a lot of teaching. Oh, so yes. She's definitely. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, I want to take it just class. to take a class with yeah. her, even though I know how to knit a sweater. Yeah. <laughs> um, sure. And then this, it's interesting that it's backwards. The front, it's a cardigan. Um, it's kind of a below your hip length cardigan. Obviously, you can do any length. The reason the back is showing is because the front is relatively plain. Mm -hmm. It's called boxed and cabled by Hannah, and I really cannot pronounce this last name. <laughs> I'll put it in the captions, M-A-C-I-E-J-E-W-S-K-A. -E but there's this beautiful cable mm -hmm. detail. And I did take a picture, so hopefully I'm inserting the picture right now. But it's really gorgeous. And the last thing in here that we really want to talk about are these bags. They're Maker's Totes by Della Q. And there's a, a mustard yellowish one back there. But they're mesh, and they've been really, really, really popular. And they've placed a couple orders to restock. They come with a little pouch inside. But it's super lightweight. Super great has, for traveling, too. It has snaps all the way across the top to close it. So yeah, they're really beautiful bags. So there, we got that out of the way in okay. the beginning. <laughs> so I have a question. Is that really cabling? Is that really cabling? 
<laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yep. Interesting. Yeah. But it's cabling going. Oh, it's, it's knit sideways. Right. It's yeah. knit sideways. Okay, cool. But yeah, so every time I come here, I look at all, you know me, I'm sold by samples. So yeah. I love to check yeah. out all the samples. It's very um, Nora Gone esque I mm -hmm. think, you know. Yeah, yeah definitely. All righty. So the really exciting thing, and let's do it at the beginning. Okay. Instead of at the end yeah. is? Um, our Valentine's Day giveaway. So on our last video, Karen and Felicia generously offered to um, give us a Valentine's Day giveaway, some beautiful pink yarn from Mayak. It's Tibetan Cloud. And we had over 700 comments. I want to say 790 or something. And the winner is, um, and I don't, I'm not going to say her. I'm going to say your Instagram um, no, YouTube. name. No, YouTube. Or name. YouTube. YouTube name. Because I don't know if the end goes with the Adler or not. So oh, anyway, it's J A C K I E N. A D L E R four six four eight on YouTube. So Jackie and Adler, congratulations, you're our winner. Yes, and I met you at Vogue Knit Live. Yes. What a coincidence. Yeah, right? the comment was um, I met you I met you at Vogue Knit Live. So that's so fun. And yeah. by the way, the yarn is more than a sweater's quantity. Mm -hmm. It really is a lot of yarn and they're not all the same dye lot. lot. Many of them are. There's like they, two dye lots maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just alternate skeins mm -hmm. if you're going to, depending on what you're going to do, Jackie. Mm -hmm. um, but also, somewhat recently, I ordered some stitch markers from Japan. I didn't originally know that they were going to come from Japan, but a viewer had posted, people do this all the time and I love it, mm -hmm. they'll post maybe a picture of us up on their screen and then what they're knitting oh, on. Right. And then, you know, I don't remember if that's what this was, but mm -hmm. there was a picture of this woman's knitting and her new crystal stitch markers on her knitting and I think we must have been tagged in the picture maybe it was for the petite knit cow hmm. can't remember mm -hmm. but I saw these little crystal stitch markers and I said oh my goodness they're beautiful and I'm not really a stitch marker collector no. mm -hmm. but they were so <laughs> I don't know they were so they're beautiful simple. they they're are simple very simple yeah and so I contacted her well I looked up her post and she has a little shop so I went to the shop but it's all in Japanese. <laughs> so I couldn't understand anything. So I sent her a message. Her name is Haruna, I think. Let me take a peek. Yes, Haruna. And I sent her a message and said, hey, I want to order some of your stitch markers, but I can't understand your, your website. Can you please help me? So she helped me. And um, because of the shipping from so far away, mm -hmm. I decided to buy five sets of them. They're right. not expensive. Mm -hmm. But to make it worth the shipping and handling. Right. So I bought a few sets and they got here and Haruna had written me this lovely little mm -hmm. note. <laughs> so thank you so much Haruna. And she has a, a, just a little woman, a woman owned shop. Mm -hmm. So if you're, um, if you, yeah, even if you don't speak Japanese, contact her and order things off her little shop. It mm -hmm. got here really quickly. But I'm going to include one set of the stitch markers in with the prize. They're so pretty. And she got me a set. And I gave you a set. <laughs> I also gave one set away on Instagram. So there we go. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll get you, um, obviously, email us, mm -hmm. Jackie, at K-T-O-G-W, Kim and Jana at gmail.com. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that we can get your address and mail your gift out, yes. your prize. Yay, that But there's no fun. way to contact people on um, YouTube. There used to be. Yeah, and we just don't want to start letting people know. First of all, if we let you know and reply to your comment, a lot of people don't get notifications. Right. So they never and see it. And that's how the bots work. That's how the spam and bots work, yes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Congratulations. How long is that now? It's less than 20 minutes, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, so what's next? What we're wearing? Yes. Okay. You want to go first? first? Oh, I guess so. I didn't know what I was wearing, like literally, until like, 10 minutes before I left the house. Neither did I. Um, but I thought, okay, well, this video is coming out in March, and there's St. Patrick's Day. Do I have anything green? And I went to my little sweater closet, and I thought, oh, I'll wear this. I love this sweater. Um, this is the Dingley Dell by Isabel Kramer. And it is, you know, I put it on. I thought, this sweater fits perfectly. I loved making it. I just, it was so detailed and interesting and oh a few stitches here for a dart and a tuck and a it was just a great pattern and we did this this is the dingley doll we did this for a knit along with mayak so she and isabel kramer yeah remember? and isabel she kramer was... and she was on our zoom oh, it's crazy i know it's crazy 
And so this yarn was generously gifted to me and we both got a sweater's quantity of yarn. So this is the Mayak Baby Yak and Silk. Oh, and I grabbed one from the shelf over there <laughs> in the Parvati colorway. Yeah, Parvati. And um, the mohair was actually given to me also by Isair. And they do um, numbers for their colors, but I'll put those in the show notes. And it's in my Ravelry. And I talked about it extensively in episode 11. Yes. Yeah. So you'll hear all the details in episode Yeah, 11. which I probably can't remember anyway. So I think I didn't even put what size I made in Ravelry, but I think I made the second size looking at the bust measurements. And it is so soft. And I love this sweater. And I'm so glad that I added the mohair. I think the mohair added a little bit of structure mm -hmm. to the pattern. And so, you know, you made one and it, it was kind of low cut. Mm -hmm. um, I have this, I made this to pattern. Um, I don't have any trouble with it being too low cut um, as long as I don't bend over. <laughs> but you ended up putting yours in the dryer? Yeah, I felt like when I blocked it, wet blocked it, it, it grew. It grew, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is surprising with the, but the silk, content. silk in it. Yeah. Wait, did I make mine out of silk? No, I think oh, I made mine out cotton. of cotton. That's why. It's yak and cotton Baby yak blend. Cotton. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, she did stripes. So the, the sample knit by Isabel is striped. Yeah. It looks very much like a rugby That was her inspiration, right? Yeah, a rugby t-shirt. Yeah. I guess Dingley Dell's the location. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway. Let us I just, know. I just got the wild idea to omit the stripes and make a long sleeve. It's perfect. So, thank yeah. you. So... My, uh, what I'm wearing is, yeah, I, the weather right now in New York is, is funny. It's, you know, <laughs> 18 degrees one day and now it's 58, 60 degrees now. So yesterday I wore my Amina, which I absolutely love. <laughs> and I've actually been posting on my Instagram. I know spring is coming. So I've been trying on all the cold days to wear all mm -hmm. my sweaters mm -hmm. because I kind of get lazy and I just wear leggings, a t-shirt and sweatshirt or a sweatshirt mm -hmm. yeah but I'm trying to pull out all the sweaters and wear them before the the spring mm -hmm. weather really hits mm -hmm. anyway so yesterday I wore my Amina and I thought oh I looked so cute I'll wear it today <laughs> but then I checked the weather I even texted you and said I was gonna I know, wear and I forgot my phone and I had my watch and it was it's hard to respond but I'm thinking she might want to rethink that <laughs> <laughs> that might be too darn warm because it's all intarsia, and so it's like a double thickness. Oh, it's in the so front. thick. It's Cory yeah. worsted. Lubby right. anime Cory worsted. Plus, it's a worsted weight sweater. And I usually wear this blouse under it. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, what can I wear that isn't a summer sweater? Because it's not summer. Mm -hmm. It's lightweight and something I love and haven't worn in a while. And it's this. This is the Tweed Tee, because originally, Karen, it's designed by Karen Altebeff here in Pick Up Every Stitch. It was originally knitted and created in a tweed yarn. And the original yarn was actually a DK, um, but this is fingering, I'm pretty sure. This is Prosper yarn um, pooling on purpose, and the color is rubber sole, as in S-O-U-L, not the sole mm. of your shoe. <laughs> and, um, but Karen had knit one in this, and I loved it so much, the way it pooled, that I wanted to knit one, and she helped me change the gauge and figure out what size to make and, and everything. And uh, I talk about this extensively in episode 13, but I'll say this now. What's so interesting about this is my pooling is completely different than Karen's. Mm -hmm, because of the size. Right. Mm -hmm. I have a bigger circumference, mm -hmm. so it just happens differently, and I don't care. I love it anyway, and it's, it, I just I love it so much. It's so lightweight mm -hmm. and... Um, and uh, drapey and flowy. Mm -hmm. I just love it. But I did wear the blouse underneath it because it isn't hot outside or warm. Mm -hmm. It just, yeah. So I absolutely love it. Karen has also designed the same sweater in a worsted weight, but the name of that one is Erin, E-R-Y-N-N. -N. It's a really beautiful, simple construction, top down with raglan shaping. And the neckline is the finished neckline that you knit along is a little I-cord. So you don't have to do anything to it when you're done. And I just absolutely love it. On hers, she did a signature uh, detail at the mm. arm, the sleeve cuffs and the hem. I did not do that because it's, I find it a little less stretchy. And, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I was worried I wouldn't do it the right um, gauge or mm -hmm. wouldn't fit right. Mm -hmm. So I just did mine a typical um, one by one rib and I 
Oh, it looks like I even did a tubular uh, <laughs> Italian sewn bind off. I didn't even know I was doing that way back then. So uh, I love it. So thank you for that design, Karen. Uh, if you need a really simple uh, V-neck t-shirt, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is the one, or sweater, this is the one to knit. I was driving up here and I was looking at my bind off on my cuffs and it definitely is not an Italian bind off. So I didn't know how to do that back then. So, um, it's yeah. It's beautiful though. That's the only thing I would change about this. We know what we I know when we know it. Yep. And it's fine. Yep. <laughs> And it's a journey, right? Exactly. So it, it is fun to look back at things and remember, oh, I was just learning that, or I didn't know how to do that, or, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen my swatch wall at home? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bought a bulletin board. I've been organizing a lot, and uh, I always don't know what to do with my swatches because, you know, I never swatched before 2021, mm -hmm. never. My first few garments, eh, didn't really fit great, and... But you knew that you were your gauge was usually tight. I didn't really know, you didn't honestly. Know. No, oh, okay. I knit baby things before that. Right. I, and I would knit a baby sweater big because then they will, can wear it longer. Mm -hmm. So blankets, scarves, hats mm -hmm. didn't really matter. But then when I started knitting garments for myself in 2019, the first few, you know, this, yeah, I, they just weren't like mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. And so I decided 2021, of course, COVID, we're stuck at home, was going <laughs> to be my year of the swatch. I wasn't going to rush. I was just going to swatch everything. And I did. So I have this whole collection of swatches. Recently, I bought a big linen bulletin board, put it on top of my yarn cubbies, and bought these cute little gold push pins. Mm -hmm. And I put all of my swatches up there, kind of in an ombre effect from light oh, to dark. Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh, it looks very professional. <laughs> it looks very important. <laughs> yeah. I'll it's like that um, petite knit. Sometimes she shows her... Her wall. Yeah, her mood board or her wall. So, so thank you to everyone because I, I mentioned that I wanted to do that in a previous video and everybody had suggestions. And I'll insert a picture of my beautiful nice. swatch board. And uh, I'm really happy with it, but yeah, it's really pretty. Anyway, I don't know why I started talking about that. <laughs> Welcome swatch? to. I don't know. I don't know. I did swatch for this. The, it's on the board. We're talking about the Italian bind off. Who knows? I don't know. That's how our minds work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to ever go back, I like when I have a thought. I like to go backwards and remember how I arrived at that thought. Oh, I think absolutely. That's a fun exercise. Yeah. Oh, you do that too? Yeah. Oh, okay. Almost like word association. Yeah, you find yourself thinking about, I'm like, why am I thinking about that? Yeah, so you think, why, why did I, how did I yeah. get here from there? And then it's a good mental exercise too to see if you can remember how you arrived at the thought. Yeah, well, I kind I of use that skill in a different way oh. in my regular life because everyone in my household loses things. Mm. <laughs> and I tend to notice things and I, I'll see something and I make a mental note, oh, George's this is there, mm -hmm. or Elena's that is there, or my mom's whatever is there. Mm -hmm. But when people do lose things and I don't know where it is, I'll say, okay, so when was the last time you remember having it? Or, you know, I do that, I backtrack with them, and uh -huh. then, then what did you do? And then where did you go? It usually helps, then we can figure it out. So, do you ever do that? No. <laughs> no. Anyway, okay, FOs. I don't have any. So take it away. I seriously don't have any. I just have not had a lot of knitting time. So. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And I only have a few little things. One is, and I don't have, um, I don't have either, one, two, three. I don't have three of them here. Mm. But I'll talk about them quickly. So the first one is the brioche pastiche hat designed by Michelle Lee Bernstein. I was working on it when we filmed episode 24. And it was the class project for my Vogue Knit Live class of the same name, Brioche Pastiche. You could either make the cowl, it was a one pattern with a cowl and a hat option, and I made the hat in size large. I, since it was a class project, we used worsted weight wool. I used uh, from my stash, I do have a little stash of I heard leftovers. Say, it's not a stash, it's a collection. And we I should just that. embrace our collection instead of feeling like Stash, I don't know, it has kind of this negative connotation in that, oh, I stashed that behind the, you know. Oh, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay, that sounds um, good. Yeah, a collection. <laughs> in um, case you're feeling guilty about your collection. And I don't have a big collection of unassigned yarn. No. This is left over from a project, which yeah. I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt myself for a minute. I was with my daughter Jenny recently, 
and we went, I'll talk about it in a little bit, we went to, I finally, I was there and for a couple of days at her house in, near Hartford, Connecticut, and I thought, I wonder if there's a yarn shop around here. Of course there is, but I've never ever checked. So I went to a local yarn shop there, and they had a wreath made out of yarn balls. It was so adorable. And my daughter saw it first, and she wants to make one, so she's going to use a bunch of my leftovers, yarn balls, and make a wreath. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Do you just make, like, a line just to the attach yarn Attach them to one of those kind of brown twiggy, you know? You know, like, um, I guess you could wrap around a styrofoam ball, too, or something like that, but And I don't then you know. put them in the dryer? Or you get them wet and you put them in the No, dryer. no, no. They're just actually wound yarn. Oh, okay. They're not felted balls. Mm -mm, not felted. Got it. Mm -mm. Got it. So anyway, again, off track. <laughs> oh, gosh. So uh, I did not swatch because it's for a class. I figured I'm going to make the um, size large hat if it's small because I'm a tight knitter. Then I'll give it to my granddaughter Harper or my granddaughter Ruby. Um, so uh, for the class, the homework was to cast on. Uh, join in the round and knit one row, which I did. And in the class, we did a couple, uh, maybe six to eight rows of two color brioche. And then she taught us increases and decreases, and we followed the chart. So she taught us how to read the chart, um, how to do a few different increases and decreases, all of the ones you need for the hat. And we, I did one full repeat of the hat by the time I left the class of the brioche pattern. And then I think there should have been one more full repeat, a 28 row repeat. I'm pretty sure, and then the crown shaping. I already knew from her pictures of her hat, it was it didn't come down over the ears, and I wanted it to, so I added an additional 24 of the 28 rows of the brioche pattern repeat, the chart, and then I did the uh, crown shaping, which is absolutely gorgeous. I have pictures, which I am already inserting, or I have already inserted, and then when it was finished, um, it turns out it fit my daughter Jenny, and she saw it. She loves plants. She said mm -hmm. it looks like vines growing up. So um, I gave it to her, and I got a cute little... I actually got a child-sized pom-pom from here because I didn't want the pom-pom to be so big that it overwhelmed the gorgeousness of the brioche. And I actually bought two pom-poms here, and I let Jenny choose, mm -hmm. and she also chose the small one. So I'll insert a picture of her wearing it as well. But it was really a fun pattern to knit, super easy. And again, I'll say it again. You can go back and watch my Vogue Knit Live video, the recap, but I cannot believe how much you can learn in three hours. I had never done brioche in my life, except fix a mistake for Jonna once, mm -hmm. and I, I really, I feel like I could brioche now. I mean, yeah, two color increases, decreases, so I love the hat. Thank you, Michelle, for that wonderful class. Um, and then I'll just talk through my finished objects since you yeah. don't have any. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another little thing I did, and I'm not going to talk a lot about it. You can go back again and watch the Vogue Knit Live recap with our guest host, Pat. Mm -hmm. uh, the first night, the Friday night, the marketplace opens for a few hours. And I just wandered around, and I saw this little booth with this um, interesting yarn. It's 100% nylon. Ooh. And it's really drapey. It's a chainette. And... All these bright, bright, bright colors in these little plastic bags, like bullet skeins, in these little plastic bags with twist ties, they look like pieces of candy. And so, but all of their samples were um, crochet. So I asked the owner, the booth is owned by, I don't know how to pronounce it, AIO Knits, A I O Knits, and the owner is Jin Parker. And I asked if they had any knit samples, and they didn't. So I got this brilliant idea, because I really wanted to see what it looked like knit up. I thought it would make a cute tote or something, um, even like weatherproof. So I bought one little pack of this pink, thinking of my granddaughter, Ruby. And then I went around the corner to another booth. I don't know if it was a clover booth. I think it was clover knitting needles. And I bought, uh, they were crocheting with a, um, a big crochet hook comparable to a size 9 or 10 knitting needle. So I bought a size 10 uh, knitting needle and I cast on right there and I was walking around the marketplace just knitting. Uh, I thought I could just make a swatch for them to keep in the marketplace for two days so people could see. There's a lot of knitters. So I cast on a few rows of garter stitch, did a few rows of garter stitch, then started knitting stockinette and Within a few rows, I thought, why don't I just make the bag, right? 
Uh, in the booth, the crocheted things they had were like water bottle bags and totes and things like that. So I just kept knitting all that that evening and that night and in the morning I finished the garter stitch on the other end and then I mattress stitched up the sides and then I went back to the booth early in the morning at 10 a.m. when they opened and as part of their crochet bags they have those what designer was it that had those gold chains and you would weave usually mm -hmm. leather woven through it was that Chanel? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Chanel. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> Our fashionista, resident fashionista here. <laughs> and so they had these chains with clips that they used on their bags. So I wove the pink in one of the chains and clipped it on. And I left it there for them to have for the whole weekend. Aww, Jin was so sweet. happy. It was fun. Just helping out a it little bit Sounds like there. something you do. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I finished the bag and picked it up on Sunday. And then I brought it home and I gave it to Ruby for her birthday, which mm -hmm. was early in February. And she loves it. So I'll insert a picture of Ruby holding her little bag. It was really fun. I mean, I could have made it deeper, but I was worried about running out of yarn. And I didn't have a scale. You know me, I usually weigh my yarn and see how much I'm using per row, but I didn't have a scale with me, so couldn't do that. Anyway, so I finished those things, and then I have no idea what I want to knit because I'm a project knitter. I don't have anything on my needles except for the Arne and Carlos Brita pillow, and I wasn't ready to <laughs> tackle that yet. So I decided that whole group of sweaters that you viewers voted on, I decided to start swatching for those. The next one on the list is the Soldatna. And so I swatched for the Soldatna in the round. And I started with the suggested needle size, which was a US 5. This is a, a kit by Woolen Vine Yarns, our friend Kristen. I bought it a while ago. And the yarn is even more gorgeous in yeah. person. So I've seen this on her Instagram. Yeah, it's gorgeous. But, oh my goodness. It's just... And so I started with the US 5. I did do an in the round swatch, which I think I'm gonna... Did I mention this before? I think I'm gonna stop doing because I think my gauge is almost the same. But I did the... basically the beginning collar work from the neckline. I guess I could put it this way. And I noticed there wasn't a lot of contrast, and also I wasn't at gauge, so I went up a needle size in here, like right here. So um, a six, a seven, and by the time I got here, I restarted the color work from the beginning, and I did my own placing of the colors, mm -hmm. and I love this. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love this. So you used one color above the arrows and another color below the arrows. Yes. Yeah. And then I alternated the color in these stripes, oh, okay. which it wasn't. And if I started with green, pink, green, then mm -hmm. I did pink. And if I did green here, then I did mm. pink, green, pink. And I absolutely love, it's not the way Caitlin Hunter did it. It's mm -hmm. her design, mm -hmm. but where the color placement is, I kind of mixed it up mm -hmm. and put more colors in. So I love it. And I still didn't get gauge. So. <laughs> After I blocked that, I did a mini swatch on the next needle size, and then I got um, above gauge, so I can go, go between eight or nine, I think. But anyway, so those are those swatches. But then I really, um, and actually viewers have said this, I tend to knit a lot of complicated things, mm -hmm. right? And I think I'm a little tired. <laughs> and I just needed a little break from complicated. So I'm gonna knit the Solatna eventually. So I was talking about my swatches, and uh, the reason I put my swatches in with my FOs is because they're finished swatches. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and because I had no FOs. So. <laughs> right. And also just to see, have you see my thought process, because I am kind of tired of doing complicated projects. So then the next would have been hen knit, but it's a color work sweater, and I didn't feel like swatching another color work. Mm -hmm. So I skipped that, and I swatched for my coffee bean cardigan, which is by Elizabeth Smith Knits. And I bought this yarn at Perfect Blend Yarn and Tea Shop once on the way down from vacation. This is Kelborn Woolen's Scout. Mm -hmm. And it's a, just a simple striped cardigan. And um, I, I just fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. And so I will definitely knit that eventually, but I still didn't think I wanted to knit that right now. So then I decided to swatch my Samling, which is a V-neck pullover designed by Sari Nordland. And I think it was designed for Wolfhook yarn. And I ordered the yarn, Wolfhook Stroh, S-T-R-A with a little 
circle over mm -hmm. it. I think you pronounce that stro, mm -hmm. and I think it means straw. Mm -hmm. So I swatched for that. It's an all-over cable uh, pattern, and I swatched with the suggested needle size, which was, I have it written here, let's see. And this is simple? Uh, no. <laughs> But that's what all my all my stash things are it's really complicated. complicated yeah. I do have um, a Felix cardigan, which is simple. Mm -hmm. But I also kind of want to go in order because I said I would. Anyway, uh, I uh, the suggested needle size was a US six. Sorry, I'm not mentioning the millimeter needles today. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry, all you. Europeans out there, everyone that's not in the U.S. and uses the no metric system and not us. Uh, so I started with a U.S. 5, and then I went up to a 6 and a 7, and I still didn't get gauge. So it's supposed to be really drapey. And I did read, ah, I'm learning from Jonna. I went on Ravelry <laughs> and read some of people's notes, and some people did regret not really going up to the proper needle size mm. because theirs is not as drapey. Mm -hmm. It's a very woolly wool. Mm -hmm. It's, you know... A sticky wall. But this is a summer design, isn't it? Mm -mm, I don't think so. It's a long sleeve. Oh, is it long sleeve? I don't know why. I guess it's, because it's, it's a I linen. I think it's similar to this. It's yeah. It's got linen in it. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess um, I was thinking it's just summer. But then, so I went up to, um, in, uh, oh my goodness, what did I write? A 9 and a 10. Uh, and I didn't measure this yet, so I, I'm pretty sure I must have gauged somewhere in there. And these are blocked. <laughs> So I'll measure those. But still, I still didn't feel like starting a knitting project. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I just didn't feel like knitting. You're um, decorating your swatch wall. Yeah, I was de decorating my swatch wall. Just mm -hmm. a lot going on anyway. Mm -hmm. So I decided, I, do you have those like a basket of nagging, mending, and things you didn't finish? <laughs> you know, I don't usually have a lot of whips. I thought, let me just do those. So one of them was... Um, one of them was um, this little knit a bunny from a square that I did for my kids' knitting class a couple years ago. And it's designed by Kristen of Studio Knit. And what, what I did, the kids actually didn't get that advanced, but I showed them if you can just knit a simple swatch square, perfect square, um, and then you, you go to Studio Knit and see, look up knit a bunny from a square, but you, or you baste a triangle on the square and then you cinch it, and that makes the neck, it forms the ears, and it forms the head. It's that simple. And then you sew up the seams down the back and on the bottom. And my bunny sat like that for at least a year. I can't remember when the last time I taught. And so I had already made the pom-pom, so I pulled it out of the thing, and I sewed that pom-pom on and put the little face on. And it's finished. It took me half hour. <laughs> so satisfying and so easy and not complicated. And then another thing, I had some clothing to mend, knitwear, not hand knit for my daughter. I did that. And then one other thing, my mom, my mom's friend from church, had one day, two years ago, brought her her favorite cashmere sweater. Like fine, fine, fine machine knit from a store, her favorite cashmere sweater. And it had moth holes all over in it. And she said, dear, can your daughter fix this? <laughs> So I said, sure, I can try. And I immediately took it home, put it in the freezer for a while to kill any bugs that might still been in it. And then I had my mom go through it with um, light bulb stitch markers and find every mm -hmm. hole. I just had to recruit some help. And I did, even way back then, I, I bought a mending kit here, pick up every stitch with uh, like a warm option for darning yarn a thread and a cool option. And I bought a mending, a visible mending book. And I also um, sent my mom some videos of possibilities. And I told her, I told her to tell her friend, it's not going to be invisibly mended. Mm -hmm. It's going to, I'm going to have to use visible mending. So uh, I had her choose which color she liked, cool or warm, and what style of mending. She's a baker. So did she want like cupcakes <laughs> and flowers? <laughs> or did she want kind of something more low-key? And she chose low-key. And I did, over the last two years, pick it up every once in a while and try a few ways, and I just wasn't happy. And then, because I got that embroidery hoop mm -hmm. to do that sweater for your granddaughter, mm -hmm. I had a hoop. And I thought, oh, let me put it in the hoop and try again. And that just solved the problem. Mm -hmm. It really did. So I'm going to insert pictures. I used like a weaving method, and I basically picked up vertical. I, I wove, let's see, 
I made vertical threads and then I wove horizontally and I just changed up the colors I used all different colors and unfortunately it's really fragile the, the existing thread yarn in the sweater so as I was mending holes more holes were being created oh, no. so I finished it and it turned out beautifully I love it and I gave it back to her with a big long note this is very fragile it mm. might not be mm -hmm. worth mending in the future, but mm -hmm. I did it. Yay! Yay! I'm so happy. You definitely needed some tension created yes. by the embroidery hoop. Absolutely. That yeah, helps otherwise so it'd much. be all loosey goosey. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I had to use like a real sewing needle. It's that fine. I mm -hmm. could not get a tapestry needle through those stitches. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it was, it was, I'm so happy it was done. It took me two full days of mending, but I finished it and it's done and I gave it back. And she's a baker, so she gave me a pecan pie to say thank oh, you. Oh, nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Pat. Um, but it was, it's just nice, that basket now. Well, it was empty until my daughters gave me two more things. <laughs> but I got those off my plate. So those are technically, I guess, finished objects. Good. And then I still wanted to do something simple. I promise I'm almost done. But since Jonna had been ooing and about the Manhattan hat, <laughs> and I had this beautiful ball, one ball of Bouton d'Or yarn. I bought it here at Pick Up Every Stitch, but the company is now out of business, they don't make it anymore, so don't call, you can't buy the yarn. But it's this beautiful multicolored yarn. So I made a bulky version of the Manhattan hat and loved it, and I gave it to my granddaughter, Harper. It was just something easy to take out of the house mm -hmm. when I did want to have my fingers be busy and knit. And I, um, John had talked about hers, but I made the adult small. I used a US 9 for the tubular cast on. It does ask for a tubular cast on, but you can do whatever one you want. Then I switched up to a US 10 because I found if I do a tubular cast on with the same size needle, it's a little too stretchy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I didn't do a gauge swatch because I figured it'll fit whoever. And I only had one ball of yarn. And I did do the inside out decreases because John explained last time that there's two options. You can do them right side out and then their pearl decreases or you can do them inside out and their knit decreases and then your inside becomes your outside. Right. Um, the only thing I don't like about the hat, can I tell you, mm -hmm. is it looks best when that, when the seam goes mm -hmm. ear to ear, mm -hmm. it's up here, but people who don't know that put it on any old way yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> ah! it's crooked. So my daughter took pictures of her daughter in the hat, but like it's, it's not centered. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I wear mine and I'm always like, is it centered? <laughs> <laughs> so do I give a diagram to the person I, know, I gift it to? I know. No, you're just supposed to be like a hipster and know how to wear it. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I did have a lot of little finished objects and those are them. And in a minute you'll hear about did I pick up something complicated to knit now, or what am I doing? <laughs> did you love the decreases in that hat? I did. Yeah, I just love that every round is a decrease round. So mm -hmm. there's no, like, is this a decrease round? Is this, you know, it's, it's super mindless. Yeah, and because I did the bulky version, it was really fast. fast. I, I think I did it in three days, but I barely knit because mm -hmm. I haven't been knitting a lot. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. So thank you for, and thank you again to Laura, Yarn Ensembles. Is yeah. Because she's the one who, um, does she test knit for Tori you? I think she does. She test knits for a lot of people. Think, yeah, she does. But Laura comes here all the time. She lives in Jersey? No, Manhattan. Oh, Manhattan, right. I forgot. Sorry. Sorry, Laura. I knew you <laughs> lived in Manhattan. Um, but she comes up here all the time. Pick up every stitch. is one of her favorite local yarn shops. And we see her here all the time. And she, right from the beginning, she recommended the Manhattan hat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. All right. Whips. Okay. Go. Oh, I just right. talked for like 20 minutes straight. <laughs> I know. I was enjoying it. I'm just sitting here knitting. So, um, I will talk about my Oslo sweater, I guess. Um, Everybody loves the color of this sweater. I know. I so love many the color comments. of this sweater. This is the Oslo sweater by Petite Knit. Um, I'm making the size two, and you don't have to decide the size until, um, so the first three sizes start with the same number of stitches. So I didn't decide until I had a swatch a swatch <laughs> my sweater was a swatch and it was big enough for me to measure my gauge and my gauge was on it usually is with petite knit so i did choose the second size this does have quite a bit of ease and i did want that that ease so um recommended ease is eight to ten inches 
So there are how many sizes? Let's see, extra small to 3XL to fit a bust circumference of 31.5 to 51.25. Um, yeah, so this will give me about nine inches. And that's the finished these. measurement size, or that's the bust? No, that's the bust circumference. Okay. So, the so finished, add on. Yeah, the okay. finished size would be eight to ten inches, even larger than those measurements. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's knit using a two point five, a four. Like I'm using a four for the ribbing right now, and then the body is knit on a seven, a U.S. seven, which is a. Oh, I always remember that Kevin from Needles at the Ready says. A four millimeter is a US six, so it must be a 4.5 millimeter. Yes, seven, 4.5 millimeter. <laughs> I forgot my cheat sheet. Um, I'm trying to remember, because I know that people really do appreciate that. So um, you start by knitting flat, you cast on stitches at the back of the neck. Should we turn it around backwards? Yeah, and I do talk about this in, in the previous episode, so I probably won't go into too much detail. But you do start at the back of the neck, and you make this like trapezoid shaped thing and then continue knitting and then pick up stitches right here which I thought was one of the most beautiful things about the sweater. It's along the these... back of the shoulder it really. Is. Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. yeah so it really shows it's not right on the top of your shoulder and an another thing I loved about this pattern was just the deep ribbing on the neckline and it is a folded over um, folded over neck ribbing. I really really spent a lot of time picking up the stitches around the neck because I love this increased beautiful. detail. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. Now, did she say to increase um, on the left side of the neck to lean left and the right side to lean right? Was that specified? Yes. Okay. yes. Um, and I am going to put a little bit of elastic cord. I think just because I want it to lay super flat. And, you know, if you stretch it over your head, what if it's just a little wavy gravy? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Um, and I knit the body to the recommended length, and I did the ribbing. It's gorgeous. And I did not follow my own advice, and I'm annoyed with myself. And why? Because I was just lazy, but I really should have knit the last row of the body on the ribbing sized needle, because it just always looks neater. Why I didn't do that? I was probably in bed, and I just didn't want to go out and get the needles. <laughs> but I wish I had. Anyway. Um, there are four rows of double knitting before you start the tubular bind off. And this is to show you how much knitting time I had. So I sat down in bed and I measured my yarn and started the tubular bind off and I got one stitch done. One. And either the dog needed something or the, my dad needed something or my husband needed something. I literally bound off one stitch and had to put it down. So anyway. This is Julie Asselin Fino, which is a merino and silk blend, I want to say. I'll stick this in here. Yeah, oh, it's a merino cashmere and silk blend. And um, Julie Asselin Anatolia, which is the silk and mohair. And I didn't, I'm not using the mohair strand to do the tubular bind off. I heard that, that's so smart. Yeah, because I have literally like eight feet of yarn. And why do it? So why, why make it my life difficult? Yeah. <laughs> so I cut the mohair strand, I'll just weave that in and I'm just using the single strand it's of gorgeous. fingering. It's gorgeous, I love so it. So I, I just really love it, so. Anyway, can't wait to do the sleeves and I think I'm going to do them two at a time, concurrently, not on the same needle. Okay. Not mm -hmm. on the same needle. I'm just going to do like 10 rows, 10 rows, 10 rows, 10 rows. So oh, nice. That when I'm done, I'm done. Yeah, you could do one to the first decrease and then do the next yeah, one to the next. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Um, and the very last part of the pattern is where they have you pick up the stitches for the neck. But I was not going to wait till the end of the pattern. So I talked about that. So not only aesthetically, it was pleasing and I, you know, it help motivating me, but also the sleeve length and it's sitting and where the it's body. going to sit. Yeah. Otherwise, the it... body length. Mm -hmm. So I really would recommend doing the neckline before you finish the garment. So, anyway, it it's is beautiful. Just... I put your needle in the oh, there. Thank so you. there it is. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. So, I love it. I can't. <laughs> Maybe next episode it'll be done. It'll be done. Yeah, it'll be done next it'll episode. Done. It will be done. It totally will be done. So, if you anyway. can get more than one stitch every time you sit down. I know, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. And it's, you know, I still have to go back to that chili dog, one by one, tubular bind off in the round, and just refresh my memory every single time. Mm -hmm. And I think I started watching, I'm, I'm obsessed with home decor 
and home remodeling and building shows. <laughs> and I'm watching Nate and Jeremiah, um, these two guys, uh, married dads. They have two little kids and they're just the sweetest and they just have a beautiful design aesthetic anyway. I got like four more stitches done and I, I don't even, I lost track. So <laughs> anyway, that's on a, halt, a full halt. So did I mention everything that I needed to mention? It's a DK weight, so it's the fingering plus the mohair. Um, yeah, so anyway, I did start that during our cow. Yes, you yes. did. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I've been working on that a couple months now. I want to say since November. It's really beautiful, but so. you've been so busy. Yeah, it's been yeah. crazy. Yeah, we've both um, been so busy. I was, <laughs> because I'm so busy, <laughs> I was briefly listening to about 15 seconds of Arn and Carlos, and um, Carlos talks about just managing his elderly parents. His dad and his mom is in a... Um, They're in Sweden, right? Yeah, his mom is in a, in a home, mm. and his dad lives independently, but my dad is 90, and yeah, we had a, had a rough year. Yeah, he, I mean, he's healthy, and he's doing well. It's just being 90 is not easy, yeah. so. Um, yeah, so I do care for him. It's my, I'm his full-time caretaker, but we did recently get an aide who's coming three days a week, which is so amazing. Yeah, I don't have to worry when she's there. So anyway, yeah, so my heart goes out to everyone who's taking care of aging parents. Mm -hmm. I was thinking how funny, not funny it is that I have infant car seats in my car occasionally, and I have rollators, which is a, a walker with wheels for my dad. I've got a dog car seat too, but I'm thinking, wow, it's really, in middle age is this weird, mm -hmm. you know, you're taking care of, infants and your own adult children and then your parents and what a blessing that is mm -hmm. to be able to be able to do all that but it is it's not something i expected you're pulled in many different in directions. middle age yeah, yeah it's it's very curious yeah you time. think you think you're an empty nester you like, do oh and i have you, all my time to myself <laughs> I'm gonna be doing all this stuff and then you get a dog and then you're like why did i do that and yeah so anyway all right so me again sure go for it how many whips do you have I have um, uh, two that I'm going to really talk about. Okay. All right. I'll just talk about what's in my lap. Do it. Which is another Soho Square by Jackie Rose. Okay, let me hold and this up. And I don't know, what was it our last episode or the episode before when we wore our finished ones? I think it was last. Last episode, I talked about my finished one. It was one. last episode. Yeah, and I was working on this in the last episode. Also, this hasn't gotten a lot of love, but it is my mindless knit. And I did bring it to Texas, didn't pick it up at all. But I'm, like you're working on an Oslo hat. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I'm just glad to have something that I can just pick up and put down. So, yep. um, this is... Diamond Lane? No. Oh, forgot. Sorry. Moondrake. It's Moondrake. It was designed... One of the yarns it was designed for was Diamond Lane. Right, Birdie. Birdie. So this is actually Moondrake Fua Fua, which is brushed cashmere and merino. And this is the color Fairy Godmother, which I just thought was, I don't know, I love the name. I thought it was pretty. I'm not really a purple person, so I don't know what's going on that day. But I actually really like it, and it looks great with my thrifted coat. Yes. My uh, kind of an... Uh, camel. Camel, I guess. It's like a cognac color. So this is Fairy Godmother, this is Sand, and this is Plum. And then I am using a fourth color, sorry. Because if you haven't done well. this, this design yet, the main color, there's a main color one on one half, a triangle, and the two contrast colors. And on the other half, the main color is a different color with mm -hmm. the same two contrast colors mm -hmm. switched right. places. And so my main color on the other diagonal is Loam, and this is Diamond Lane birdie in the color loam and this is a totally different composition this is alpaca and silk. Uh, and silk yeah so it'll be interesting because i think the yardage varies and you have some issues with running out of yarn so. i just i used too big of a needle that's why oh, it's my okay. fault I, okay. you you really shouldn't and okay. remember your first one you ran out of yarn but you had another reason why because you had a big tangle and you no because i goofed and so i frogged it because I read the directions incorrectly and I didn't, I got a tangle and then I cut the yarn. Right. So I shouldn't have done that. But Because you cut, really barely ran out of yarn. Like an inch. Yeah, it was painful. So this stuff is... Um, but if you have the correct gauge, mm -hmm. you shouldn't run out of yarn. No, no. Yeah. Mm -mm. Anyway, I love it. I think this is, this is one of those, 
um, shawls that you just throw on and you feel instantly glamorous. I oh feel goodness, like this would look so good with this hat. And it's such a funny combination, but I guess purple and green, are they opposite each other on the color wheel? No idea. I feel like they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, you know everything. <laughs> you should see the cute vest she's wearing. Maybe we'll take a picture of it. She's done some needle felting. It's just adorable. Yeah, we'll talk about it right after this. That's yeah. a good idea. Um, but this pattern is great because it comes in four sizes. So this is the square. There's a, also a wrap that's bigger. It's done on a bigger needle also, so it's a little bit looser gauge. And then there is the wink, and then there's the skinny wink. So a wink is like a kerchief style, and then the skinny wink is just a long, Strip. Um, yeah, a long yeah. rectangle that's asymmetric points. Right. I don't know if that's the right word to say, but anyway. Um, yeah, I just think it's a great pattern. It's very similar to the Pearl Soho half and half triangles wrap in construction, but there are videos that go along with this because there are some, like how do you change yarns and how do you, um, what else does she have? I guess doing the spine, the, deep, the directions are great and there's photographs and there's these videos and I thought it was very But in, like, easy it's, to I'm not intuitive in the fact that I read a pattern and I can't visual, I, I just can't visualize mm. it. So it helps for me to see the video or what helped me was was helping knit yours because mm -hmm. you did the first half and then you kind of explained to me. But I still mm -hmm. didn't understand how the spine, mm -hmm. the main color on the first half becomes the, the spine. spine. You have to think about that when you're choosing your colors mm -hmm. because the spine of the entire um, scarf mm -hmm. will be the main color one. Mm -hmm. And But how, I could not comprehend how that would work. So my spine will be in the lavender. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's nice to have a big pop too. Oh, love it. Um, so is that everything? Um, before I, no, after I cast this one on, I realized I probably should have used the German twisted cast on because my cast on edge ended up being tighter than my than the I-cord edge that you create when you're knitting. As so, you're knitting. Yeah, as yeah. you're knitting. And so mine's a square. Is yours a square also? Yeah. <laughs> it's <mean>. a square. <laughs> so. But you're never going to wear it stretched out like this. No. So. No. Um, Doesn't matter. Yeah. So anyway, I would, if I was going to do it a third time, which I am because I showed the colors in the last episode, going to do the German twisted cast on next time. Great. So, yeah. Nice. Okay. I love it so much. So uh, let me race through a couple of these because yeah. I really don't have, you know me, I'm a project knitter and I got rid of all those other things. So <laughs> one thing I am devoted to doing, one thing I realized is taking this break from knitting, complicated knitting, I am going to finish. I literally am going to finish. Wow, it's getting bigger. I know. I'm going to mm -hmm. finish my primrose throw. So right now it is... 22 flowers wide um so the longer rows because they're like nested right they're honeycombed mm -hmm. so the longer row is 22 so that means the shorter row that's nested in is 21 so basically two rows equals 43 flowers and i have six well all together six rows so i have um i wrote it down here where is it i can't remember i didn't write it here so um multiply 43 times 3. <laughs> That's how many flowers I have done. And I have to say, um, at first I was really picky. Oh, this is a design by Arne and Carlos. Sorry. I bought this way back in 2020, and it was going to be my summer knit that summer, and then everything shut down. I didn't go on my summer vacation, and I just started it at some point that year. And it's, um, I came here to pick up every stitch, and I it's meant to be like a stash, a scrappy, mm -hmm. uh, wait, not a stash, a collection <laughs> knit, <laughs> um, a scrappy. But I, I don't think you can say scrappy. I don't have a lot of scraps mm -hmm. that I could make a whole blanket. So I came in here and picked out, I can't even remember how many, 13 colors of John Arbin Knit by Numbers. Mm -hmm. DK, the previous, which is 100% um, Falklands Merino. Mm -hmm. They just changed the yarn composition, and they just had some delivered here to pick up every stitch. And I so. just bought them. Did you? I'll talk about it I later. haven't even touched it yet. Yep. So uh, I, um, I used a random color generator. I mm -hmm. put all my, you're supposed to be just, like Arnie and Carlos just pick a color out right. of the bag. I'm a little too of a, much of a control freak <laughs> to do that. So I did a random color generator and did the, f I have a whole list of a hundred flowers 
Um, wow. And still I manipulated it a little bit. What I did was I would put a, okay, I'm not going to tell you. Never mind. I'll tell you when I finish it. <laughs> Too much information. But now it's getting easier because um, it's not the kind of thing where you make a bunch of flowers and sew them together. That last round, a third round of the flower attaches it. So what I do is I find where it's going to go and I attach it right away. And by the way, I weave in my ends as mm -hmm. I go. When I'm finished, <laughs> there will be not be um, 500 and know, something times six, because there's three colors. So 500, it's going to be like 500 and something flowers times six ends per flower. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. <laughs> I also use the Arnie and Carlos method. If you watch, he does have videos about it, and um, crocheters know this. But when you attach a new color, you hold that end and you crochet around mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. around whatever. So that, and then I just cut those. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm weaving in my ends as I go. But it's getting easier to place the flowers because now it's so random that there's always a place to put them. Mm -hmm. So I love it. And by the way, remember last time? I said that I talked about it. I said I want to make a steering wheel cover because mm -hmm. this is going to go in my flower beetle. So I had this in the car one day. This usually doesn't leave the house. Uh, actually, all the yarn is still at home. I had this and I wrapped it. And to make a, f a cover, it would take exactly 17 flowers mm. long and two flowers wide. Mm -hmm. And they really almost touch. Wow. So I, um, I might, I still have to figure out how I'm going to attach them, but I'm mm -hmm. so excited <laughs> to make a steering wheel cover. And people had so many great suggestions about that as well. Um, some of them, though, I don't want to do anything that's going to get in the way of driving, mm. like Velcro or mm -hmm. anything that's going to, you know, I'm thinking about that. But anyway, I'm so excited. It's so, so beautiful. I have really been working on this exclusively uh, at home. Just, Are you enjoying it? I am. I'm enjoying it more. It's a little mm -hmm. more relaxing. I really mm -hmm. don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. I do have a marker on the right side because mm -hmm. I'm not as familiar with crochet so when right. I'm putting it on I'm like well, and is your, that the right side? Your gauge is so tight that it is hard to distinguish. The f I can but I can see. Honestly my gauge has gotten a little bit looser. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter mm -hmm. but my first flowers were tighter than these but mm -hmm. I really don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I love 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 that. So I'm Beautiful. working on that. Um, I did mention the Brita pillow which I Look back in the previous video. It's a beautiful colorwork pillow cushion, and it's a combination of stranded and intarsia. I wasn't really, um, I didn't watch any videos on how to combine stranded colorwork and intarsia, so I think I might rip back a little, but I just, again, it's a complicated project, and I just mm -hmm. didn't even feel like um, continuing right now. It's, it's a lot. So, one more. What I decided to do when I'm out of the house is I just grabbed some, some, yarn out of my collection <laughs> of um, extra yarn from uh, other projects. And this is the yarn from my champagne cardigan. It's Isayer Marilyn and Long Yarns, uh, what's it called? Mohair Lux. And so I just started another Oslo hat um, just because it's easy. And I'm knitting um, the women's size because I tend to find that the men's size is just Too large. Mm -hmm. And you know what? So you know I talk about my knitting in my German class every Saturday. And there, I think I mentioned this one older gentleman always says, where are my socks? <laughs> and I explained recently that it's actually more complicated to knit socks than you realize. You know, you have to really like measure the person's mm -hmm. foot and why hand knit a sock if it's not going to fit? Mm -hmm. And so I did have an idea since A, I don't feel like knitting anything complicated right now. B, my big project stays at home. What can I knit during class? I'm going to knit everyone in class a hat. I'm not kidding. So in class this last Saturday, I told them, uh, by the way, I'm going to knit all of you a hat. So is it okay? Uh, darf ich euer Köpfe messen? So may I please measure your heads? <laughs> <laughs> and I had a measuring tape and I went around to all their heads and measured their oh, heads fun. and asked what their favorite colors are. And I'm just going to, as much as I can, mm -hmm. use leftover yarn. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so they're all really excited to oh, get their heads. That's sweet. Yeah, it'll be fun. And why do you have stitch markers all around? Oh, I started doing that every time I do an Oslo hat. After I cast on, I place light bulb stitch markers every 10 stitches. And then, oh, because when you, and then when you, attach. and then I have then uh, smaller stitch markers that stay mm -hmm. where I'm knitting. And mm -hmm. then when you fold it and knit the brim, the double brim mm -hmm. together, what I do before it, because you know how when you're trying to fold it in and it doesn't stay, mm -hmm. I 
hook the light bulb oh. stitch marker next to the other marker. And so it stays there, mm -hmm. and then it's easier, and then I know if I get off within 10 stitches. Mm -hmm. And if I get off, I don't care. I just knit two together, mm. <laughs> just so you know. But yeah, that's why I have all those stitch markers. Interesting. So that's handy. That's I good. definitely mark my first stitch with a light bulb stitch marker, so I, at least I start off on the right stitch. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. My, my beginning of round is with a, um, a green. Mm -hmm. I'm so funny. If the pattern says to put in a beginning of round marker, mm -hmm. I use green. And if it says it's an end of round marker, I use put an red. R. A red. A yeah, red. For red <laughs> R. For and I use blue for beginning. Isn't, yeah, for B yeah, for blue. Funny. B for blue. And then I put them in like rainbow order. <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> I am so crazy. Oh gosh. Just makes me happy. Yeah. Okay? No well, judgment here. No. I won't judge you. Mm. You don't judge me. <laughs> Knitting should make you happy. Exactly. Yeah. So those are two of mine. I have one more that I'll talk about after you talk about your next one. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I do have one other whip, which is funny because I actually inherited this one from my daughter. All oh, right, we posted Texas. this on Instagram. Yeah. So my daughter, <laughs> I was showing her. Here, let me hold She's it. like, how do you knit, Mom? And I showed her and... You had gone to... McKinney Knitter. With yeah. her. And she's like, oh, is, is that all? Is like, it's that hard? I'm like, yeah, it's really like not, not rocket science, you know, not hard. So she's like, oh, I can knit myself a sweater. And I thought it was so funny because like, I'll, I'll walk into a room wearing a handmade garment and my husband will say, she made that. And I was like, honey, shh, you know, but my daughter's like, if I made a sweater, I'm going to walk into a room and say, everybody, I made this, mm. check it out. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I love that. Um, and then we were kind of talking about, we had a video about um, your first sweater your first or our sweater. first sweater yeah. and what we thought were good first sweater choices. And she cast on the novice sweater by Petite Knit. She's, she and I have similar style. You know, pretty, pretty basic and, you know, yeah, not, not too crazy. So this is actually similar to a sweater that she owns, but she picked this yarn out. It's Camellia Fibers. Camellia Fiber Co. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's the CFC Tweed DK, 85% Merino, 15% Donegal Nep, um, 231 yards, and this is the color Sand, and it is beautiful. It's Very so soft. neutral. It's super soft. Now, this is a top-down, uh, in-the-round sweater, but it's a round yoke. So you can, if you look at the projects on Ravelry, see where the increases are made, but it's almost a design choice. Yep. It's very... A design element. Yeah, yeah. design element. Um, so I kind of got over that, because I think in the beginning I was like, oh, the increases show. And certainly, you, I haven't looked at the pattern. I don't know what increases they are. I think they're make one left. Certainly you can use like a left, left lifted increase. You can use a, a less visible increase. Um, you know, if you want to, if you don't mind the increases showing. But, so I think there are, I want to say, there are 12 novice patterns by Petite Knit. So all the way from six to nine months through like 5XL. I think, yeah, adult 5XL. And any yarn weight from DK to bulky. And so this is the DK, which I am using the mohair, the novice mohair edition pattern because that That's the correct weight. is the correct weight and it's holding two strands of mohair together. But then I saw the novice with holding a strand of mohair. So it's an Aran weight, I think. Um, it's a DK plus, um, plus a mohair. I want to say it's Aran weight. Um, and it was so pretty. And I thought, I feel bad though. Should I rip it out and start over with mohair? It'd be so beautiful. Mm. But I also don't want to undo her work because there are mistakes in here. But you know, it's part of the journey. They're not very obvious. I think with this yarn, especially, the, I don't even think that all. the increases will be obvious because the yarn no. is so tweedy. Mm -mm. It's going to... I keep bumping her. I'm That's sorry. I'm so okay. sorry. No problem. Um, so she's just about to split for the sleeves, I think. But she, yeah, she did all this herself. So I said I would finish it for her. So Love this it. is a new whip that I, I inherited. That. Beautiful. So do I... Do I, I, I don't need to start over with no. no hair. No, I should just keep going. No, nope, just keep going. Okay. I mean, that's my opinion. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, no, I, I'm thinking about it, but I, I think I think that's what we'll do. So anyway. We can also ask her what she would prefer. Yeah, so I inherited this bag of goodies in here. I'm not even sure what's in here. So some 
some knitting notions I got her from, she from McKinney Knittery. She can wear that on those two days a year when it's cold enough I to know. wear a sweater. Um, actually, Texas. this year, I think they had colder days. Than we did. Than their coldest days were colder than our mm. coldest days. Now they only last, you know, a day or two. Right. But um, we did actually get some snow for all of you who worry about me and my snow my snow thing. We did get some snow. Anyway, so yeah, that's exciting. And if you're ever in McKinney, Texas, absolutely 100% stop at McKinney Knittery because it is one of my favorite stores. I'm going to have to fly to Texas so that I can go there with yes. you. I really want to go. Um, and they also have the source fabric. So it's like I've died, died and gone. <laughs> John of heaven. heaven. So yes, that's John of Heaven. So anyway, that is my last whip. And the rest of my projects are acquisitions because nice. I came in here the other day and I had, I had, diligently over a few months like paid down my credit card and I was just feeling very like what is that what is that saying when you're when you have money in your pocket it's burning a hole in your pocket so I didn't really have the money because it's borrowed you had credit you had credit burning a <laughs> I hole had in credit your pocket. burning a hole in my pocket I was like <laughs> I paid off my credit card almost I should go buy some yarn so I did Nice. And of course, then you walk in here and then you see a sample or a new pattern came out and they're all excited about it and they've got the yarn and so one thing led to another and I bought yarn. Oh, I can't wait to see. We have lots of acquisitions and so patterns have, to talk about. I have one more um, whip, which I haven't really talked about much. I think I talked about it when I purchased it. It's the Thea Bag mm -hmm. by Sarah Korth and I bought it as a kit on Twice Sheared Sheet because mm -hmm. when we first became affiliates, they had sent us some little free notions and we used those and loved them so we decided to become affiliates mm -hmm. but then I wanted to just see what more of their things were like and I saw this kit and I did pay full price for the kit uh, it wasn't gifted to me but it's a crochet granny square crochet bag so I thought how fun I kind of thought maybe I would do it but then I thought no I'm gonna ask my mom she crochets to mm -hmm. make the granny squares and then I will sew them together mm -hmm. and complete the bag so she finished the granny squares oh wow um, I almost didn't want to bring it because they're all in order. Mm -hmm. I have them all and the markers so I know how to lay out the bag. But there's this kind of granny square. Oh, Here, cool. uh, I'll give you the... Okay. And actually that's one that I started seaming. Yeah. And then a flower granny square. There's four different kinds. And then there's solids, if you can see that, in each of the colors. And then more of these. And we chose as our main color this green. And technically, they're supposed to be, you crochet them together, which I had to look, you know, learn how to do that. So technically, you should crochet them together using the main color, but uh, we obviously didn't gauge swatch for this, so we used up most of the green, so I decided to do my um, uh, crocheting them together with the purple, and I think it looks fine. It'll look really beautiful. So the kit came with all the yarn, and you could choose the main color? Uh, that the same quantities of all the yarn? I can't, I think maybe you got more. Of the main color. I think, okay. uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe okay. not. I can't remember, good question. But, uh, yeah, so then I'm, you know, I started it, but I, I feel like I need to be sitting in my kitchen at, on the white kitchen counter mm flat. I was trying to do it sitting in a chair and the little squares are floppy and I really don't mm -hmm. exactly, you know, I'm not used to this, so it's, it was kind of awkward, but I am going to finish it. And the kit came with these little handles. Now, I don't think they sell this kit anymore, but this is the Twice Sheared Sheep, uh, what's the name of the yarn? Everyday Merino. And it's really soft. Mm -hmm. I really love it. Soft, soft and squishy. And these are the handles that came with it. So I'll sew the handles on. I am tempted to ask somebody to sew a fabric lining mm. for the bag because Someone. crochet is holy you or <laughs> I can do that for yeah you. so I need to pick out some after it's done we'll mm -hmm. see how big it is and like make a mm -hmm. pattern but yeah so I really like it and I, it's fun because it's a project that my mom and I did together and if we like the bag when it's finished and it wasn't too much work then we might just buy some more yarn here and make some more for you mm -hmm. know I can give this to one of my daughters my mm -hmm. daughter-in-law but I like it, so that'll be really cute. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. So that's it for my official whips. Okay. What's next? Acquisitions. Acquisitions. Your yeah. favorite part. I know. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes I feel comfortable sharing acquisitions, and sometimes I don't. It just 
I don't know. I have some that I haven't shared yet, but that's fine. Yeah. So, okay. So I did buy some of the John Arbin, the new John Arbin knit by numbers. Ooh, so may now, I touch? yeah. Now it is 50% Blueface Lester and 50% Falklands Merino. And we, this is one of our favorite yarns. It, the previous base did have a tendency to pill. Now, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I mean, depilling is just, it's just a thing when you're, when you wear knitwear, mm -hmm. you know, even if you wear wool, wool, um, like woven wool pills. My niece came to, uh, to the city for a, a party, I guess. And we ended up meeting for breakfast and she had been out the night before with her friend who left her coat and her credit card at the place they were at. So oh she gave that to me and the friend came to pick it up about two weeks later. But I, I take this coat out and she's a young woman and I take the coat out and I was like, oh, I, I cannot, I just cannot not depill this. <laughs> And so I lint rolled the whole coat, and then I have one of those electric depillers. Oh. I have a gleaner also, but I have an electric depiller. I think it's Conair or some or Panasonic or something that I bought off Amazon, and I depilled the whole coat, which is very satisfying, I must say. And um, I was thinking, well, certainly she's not going to mind that I cleaned and depilled her coat. Um, so she came to pick it up and I get a text from my niece. She said, my friend said her coat looked brand new. So, anyway, so cool. it, was, it was very fun. Yay. Um, she's deep hill worthy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Anyway, it was fun. Um, so I am going to make the, and here's petite knit again. Some, I think we did get a comment. Um, and I don't, I, was it a comment on our video or maybe I was reading the comments on someone else's video about knitting kind of mainstream patterns, you know, petite knit and my favorite things knitwear and, um, you know, already Hunter, famous established. Already, yeah. But petite knit just really fits my aesthetic. And, you know, yes, do I see beautiful things that I would love to knit and I would love to be the person that wears that, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm just not. So I'm really committed to wearing things that feel like me and, and things that my husband will wear or things that my kids will wear. So anyway, I'm going to make the zipper light by Petite Knit and yeah, zipper jacket light. Now Sarah from It's a Sarah also made this for her husband. She put a long zipper in it. So all the way down, it's a cardigan and she did an all over and now I'm drawing a blank. She know. did. So it's a, a stockinette. Stitch pattern? Yeah, it's a stockinette. It's very common stitch pattern and I can't remember it, but she has it in her Ravelry. So it's an all over stockinette. You start at the top and it's got a thick doubled collar. You knit flat until you the kind of join collar in the that round. stands uh -huh, up. Kind mm -hmm. of stands up. You join in the round. It's got a half zipper. And I showed it to my husband. And, you know, he has a lot of stipulations. Okay, he's just very like, well, He's very particular. I like this. I like that. But I just thought to, I'm just going to ignore him and knit what I want to knit. And I think he'll love it. I think that I he think just he doesn't understand. Yeah. You know, when we're talking about knitting, it's, it's difficult for him to visualize. So anyway, I just thought that this would be beautiful. And I bought, I don't know, nine hanks of this, nine skeins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> skeins. Hanks. A skein is made. Oh, a hank. Okay. Um, Twisted and, hank, technically. Yeah. And it's fairly reasonable yarn. And it's just, yeah. I'm excited about using the Blueface Luster. I'm excited to see how it wears. Yeah, I can't so, wait to hear how it knits. Yeah, so that was one of my... We've been waiting for it to arrive. ...acquisitions, yes. And they do have several colors. And you're going to knit in black. Actually right behind us. So I'm going to knit in black. But, you know, we're coming into spring and summer, so it's going to be fine. I mean, black's a basic. It's just mm -hmm. a bugger to knit in, and mm -hmm. especially in the dark. And then it's hard to take pictures of. Anything dark, even this back here... To me, when I was looking through the camera, it looks like a big dark blob. It's mm. really hard to see mm -hmm. stitch definition. It's hard to see detail in mm -hmm. a dark color, but it is yeah. what it is. You're going to wear it all. The, he's going to wear it all the time. Yeah, and he's worried about being too hot, but the man is always freezing cold. <laughs> so, so is my his husband. Office, we have an old house with steam radiators, and he is just always freezing. He's got like a beanie and a hood over the beanie, and his wool socks and his slippers, and his shearling this and shearling that. So. I think he'll be quite comfortable. And my husband always wears, he doesn't wear a sweater without a t-shirt or something under mm -hmm, it. That's, right. I mean, so he can just take the sweater off if he's too warm. Yeah. So I'm excited. It'll be my first men's sweater. Oh gosh, now I have definitely to, when knit are you going to knit it? Now I need I to don't know. I don't pick know. out a pattern so we can <laughs> knit them at the same time. I don't know. 
Don't start without me. I won't start without you. Give me you. plenty of warning. I won't. He's very knit worthy. He wears his knit hats all the time. So. He loves your blue sweater. He might try to see if it fits him. I know. <laughs> He'd look good in that. Yeah. I don't think he would wear it. He'd, yeah. Yeah. We're both kind of plain dressers. Nice. So that's your acquisition. Do you have more acquisitions? I do. Oh, do you have something else to talk I about? I have an acquisition. Sure, let me just okay. do this really fast. So I said earlier that when I was at my daughter's house last week, I looked up to see if there's a local yarn shop. Ooh. There was one about five minutes away in Glastonbury, Connecticut. Mm. And it's called Village Wool. And uh, I walked in with my daughter. And um, it's definitely a yarn shop that's been there for a really long time. So... I, they kind of like, I think, have a storage issue. There's like nowhere to put anything anymore. You know, they have, you know, collected so much yarn. But uh, kind of a blessing in disguise, the building they're in has been sold and the new owner wants to completely like gut it and do something else with it, maybe even tear it to the ground. So they have to move. Mm. So um, I was talking to the owner, did not happen to be there. She had gone out, so I didn't get to meet her. But um, the other people who were there told me that... Um, you know, it's going to, you know, they're going to be able to move and reorganize. It'll be great. Hopefully they'll have more storage. But uh, I just kind of roamed around. When I came in, um, there was two people sitting at the front table, a man and a woman knitting. And then I walked toward the back, and there was another woman sitting kind of halfway back in a chair knitting. And there was another shopper. And so we walked back, and I, I think I asked the woman halfway back, are you the owner? And she said, no. Marion, the owner's name is Marion, M-A-R-I-O-N, uh, isn't here right now. Can I help you with anything? And I said, well, I haven't been here before. And Okay, so my oldest granddaughter, her birthday is coming up, and I want to knit her. I just decided last minute I want to knit her something, so a fast knit, not a, mm -hmm. not a slow knit, for her birthday. Because she's kind of getting into fashion now. Mm -hmm. You know, she's turning 11. Mm -hmm. And so her favorite color is turquoise. So I was kind of skimming the shop for turquoise and more of a bulky yarn. And um, and so uh, Marion, the, okay, so the woman who I asked if she was the owner is not Marion the owner, but her name is also Marion spelled mm -hmm. the same way. <laughs> That's so funny. So she showed me around the store, really sweet woman. Thank you, Marion. She showed me around the store. She was right then knitting with a turquoise, I think, um, a Malabrigo, but they were out of it. She said it sells out immediately, this turquoise color. So uh, I just kept wandering, and um, I, I love when people are knitting also to walk up and ask what they're making. So mm -hmm. I went up to the front and asked the man and the woman what they're making. And then when I was ready to make my purchase, uh, oh, and then the shopper who was there, her name was, um, hold on a second, uh, Pat, and she's a brand new knitter, so she was asking, she had knit some basic, maybe a scarf or something, so she was asking for like the next stage mm. of knitting, what to knit. So uh, Steve got up and was helping her, the man at the front table. It turns out he doesn't work there, but he's just been a customer there and a knitter there for a really long time. He's a police officer, and mm. he picked up knitting to help with stress mm. and never put it down. I think he said maybe 10 years ago. Yeah. And he was knitting a think a cardigan in pieces and he had a pile of the pieces that he was knitting he had done the sleeves he had done fronts the two fronts and the back he had this big pile of pieces set in sleeves I could tell by the shape and mm -hmm. he was I mean I was like wow you're amazing that's amazing and it turns out the other woman who was sitting there she works there you know a lot of knitting shops people work kind of part-time mm -hmm. her name is Marion Marianne <laughs> not spelled the same way and pronounced differently. So it was really funny. It's just kind of a funny thing. Anyway, so um, Steve got up and helped me pay for my yarn. And it was just fun talking to all of them. Uh, there's another woman named Sandy. They're like, Sandy's not here. Because then, of course, my daughter, Jenny. like She has a podcast. Yes. <laughs> she said, OK, my mom's not going to tell you, but she has a, a YouTube channel. And they're like, oh, really? Yeah, so. Uh, um, they kind of suggested, actually, maybe I come back after they move mm. and maybe film and do a video. So mm. I might do that. I might okay. go back to Village Wall and do that. I'll let you know ahead of time, though. So if anybody, any viewers are in the area, they can come and meet me there. But it was really lovely. It was so fun uh, to be there. And I loved meeting all of you. So I didn't have a sweater picked out. So I went home and I did this. I, you know, I don't usually buy yarn mm -hmm. without a sweater. Mm. But I went <laughs> home and I... Um, 
uh, looked up on Ravelry. I put in uh, the weight of the yarn. And I also looked up the yarn itself to see some mm -hmm. projects knit up so I could show Scarlett, my granddaughter, what it would look like. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, basically this is, did I say it yet? Barocco Wizard. This is what I bought. And it's a chainette. And it's 85% superwash uh, merino and 15% nylon. Good for a preteen. Mm -hmm. Indestructible, basically. Mm -hmm. And so I showed her patterns knit up with it so she could see it's going to be striped. Uh, you know, like a faded in and out stripe, which mm -hmm. is great. And I sent her a few samples of um, other designs knit in that weight yarn, all different types, cardigans, all different shapes. And she picked out, she has good taste, <laughs> she picked out the sweater Aqua by Kim Hargraves. Oh, wow. Oh, of my all <laughs> the sweaters I sent her. Oh, wow. The only issue is it's like a mesh. So mm. she would wear a tank top under oh, it. Okay. Um, the only issue is it's not available. It was published in a book of patterns in like 2015. Oh, no. And if you go and look up on eBay, copies of the book are selling for almost $200. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. So I'm not spending $200. So I looked up options. And I did find, you know, an okay option by Wool in the Gang. It's called the Penelope sweater. And it has the same kind of mesh and then stripes of garter stitch in between. Very similar shape. And I did swatch for that. Oh, here, I have a swatch. Look at that. <laughs> I swatched for that. I swatched all the stitches. I swatched, um, this is a mock fisherman's rib. Mm. This is the, they call it the holy stitch, H-O-L-E-Y, mm -hmm. garter stitch, and then a traditional one by one rib. And I did the swatch in the suggested needle size. I did not block it yet. So that's what it's going to look like Great. knit up. But I did end up casting on a few times. I already had issues with the pattern. It's probably a lovely pattern. Um, I don't like how it's written. It's really, it's, it's graded as an intermediate, mm -hmm. but it's written, like they don't call it an eyelet stitch. They call it holy. Hmm. And they don't call it a yarn over. They call it something else. Mm. And it's just really, I don't know, awkward. And then... <laughs> Because of my Keith Leonard class, it seemed there's no edge stitch. Mm. So the, pa the holy pattern starts with a knit two together. Oh, no. You know how hard it's going to be to seam together, a knit two together, and make mm -hmm. it look good? Mm -hmm. So I, was, I thought, oh, I'll knit it in the round. And also because of this yarn, if it's seamed, I'm not going to be able to match the front to the back. So I thought, oh, I'll convert it to in the round. Okay, so I started to do that. And I don't know. I just, I wasn't... It's written for flat. I wasn't. I couldn't figure out how to do the mock fisherman's rib in uh, in the round, and I was just getting so frustrated. So I ended up saying, you know what? It's not worth it. She wants the Kim Hargraves design. There must be a way to get it. So I went on Instagram, and I just put a a, a post. Help! I got all these suggestions. So many great suggestions. A lot of people said I have it. The book is in my collection. She's. Mm -hmm. They're not going to sell it. Mm -hmm. But I can like you know send you a picture or whatever and mm -hmm. I, I just said kindly um, well I don't know about copyright issues I don't think mm -hmm. that's really allowed so mm -hmm. some people said contact Kim Hargraves so I was gonna do that and ask her if I have permission or if she can provide me with the pattern I contacted Rowan they got right back to me because Kim Hargraves designs mm -hmm. a lot for Rowan mm -hmm. but it's not a Rowan pattern but they got right back to me and said oh we know she knits a lot with art but it's not our pattern good luck it's so sweet but in the end a woman found the pattern book in the UK at a used bookstore oh, wow. for 18 pounds. Oh, wow. So I ordered it. <laughs> and I can't wait to get it. Nice. And I can't wait to knit a Kim Hargraves design oh, for my wonderful. granddaughter. You know, um, Andrea from Pretty Knitting. She loves, she Kim, loves Hargraves. Kim Hargraves. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure she has that book, too. I was, like, going to oh. reach out to her. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, so that'll be really fun. fun. That is... Um, that was actually, yeah, my, um, no, that wasn't my acquisition. That was my favorite thing, was the yarn and the aqua by Kim mm. Hargraves. Um, when you were talking, it just reminded me of the Corin cardigan by Rebecca Klo because it's got that open um, mesh mm -hmm. look to it, but I think it's a DK pattern.
Yeah, I definitely didn't want to do any converting. I'm like, yeah, I don't want complicated right yeah. now. Oh, it just started pouring rain. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's not snowing. Oh, I wish it were snowing. Yeah. Anyway, I do have some other acquisitions. Go for it. So. If you're on Instagram at all, you've probably heard of the Isayer Archives mm -hmm. patterns. And they are, um, it's, an, it's a collection inspired by Osa. It's the same A mm -hmm. with the circle on top. Mm -hmm. Osa Lund Jensen's patterns from the 60s and 70s, I think. So kind of reimagined. And, and Vensel did one. It's a cape, it's right over here, Carla Cape. Mm -hmm. And I bought yarn for two of the patterns in that collection. And the first is by My Favorite Things Knitwear, and they did have the suggested yarn. So Here. It's, mm -hmm. oh, nice. So it's all Isayer yarn. So it is the Norma, and it is a top down in the round. It's got a mock turtleneck. It has a very simple color work, color work stripes. Um, and it looks very oversized as my, my favorite knit thing, my favorite Knitwear. Things. Knitwear. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Wait, let's do that again. My, my favorite, favorite things. Knitwear. knitwear. Tends to have very, um, sure. Oh, well, she'll, she'll, put in a, she'll put in a picture. Okay. Yeah. Very oversized garments with a lot of positive ease. And this is no exception. In fact, I thought the, the, cuff, the cuffs were actually double knit, which I thought, that is cool. Like my also sweater, the neckline ribbing is mm -hmm. folded over. I thought, oh, that's interesting, but it isn't. It's just so oversized mm -hmm. and thick and it's got um, an Italian bind off. So there's some double knitting in there. So the suggested yarn is the Isayer Tweed in the sand color. It's 70% wow. wool, 30% mohair. It's a fingering weight and it's, it looks like a single ply. And it's kind of nubby. It's so beautiful. Yeah, so this is the main color held together with the Isayer merino i mean that is ether silk mohair in the color six it has a little pink it tinge does have to a little it. pink tinge to it. it so i hope that's going to cancel out some of the yellow in this because yellow is not my favorite color so i'm hoping the little bit of it's like a you know what it is it's knitting for olive has like a rose mushroom color this looks like rose mushroom mm -hmm. to me and the color work Stripes are done in the same Isayer tweed in oh, blue. It's beautiful. With the blue matching mohair. And the other contrasting color is Isayer Tavini, held double, and it wow. doesn't have mohair. So this is um, gorgeous. These are the colors. So, yeah. So it's interesting because when you said tweed, normally that's like a really dramatic different color, mm -hmm. I would think, but it isn't. It's really the white silk is it the silk the white little nubs Maybe that so. are making it tweedy yeah. it's beautiful do you call them nups n e p s nups i don't know nups i don't know yeah um no i think noops is um those are bobbles like bobbles yeah <laughs> nups they are very it's very monochromatic tweed it almost looks like those flaws in fabric what mm -hmm. is that called it's like a slub yes it looks, yeah, like, a it looks slub. like a that's slub. the word yeah yeah but it's purposeful slubs yeah i don't know i just thought this was a very happy combo it is and it's sort of well i think it looks very springy Swedish and very and Swedish. Swedish. yeah yeah so anyway. and it matches your project bag oh it does my Beautifully. project bag by um jack uh, jesselyn janice jesselyn janice Yes, I knew there was a lot of J's in there. Just we talked about, about her a lot in the first year. Yeah. She donated, she gave us a few bags, gifted us. I use us. her bag all the time. She she gave us this bag. It's very deep, but it's got the drawstring, so it's super easy to use. And if I remember right, she would donate to... Mm -hmm. um, like an animal... Animal shelter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, When people bought her bag. bags. I love it. I, I use it all the time. Yeah. Just and very durable. It looks yeah. brand new. Yeah, I know, right? Love it. And it's in my favorite color. <laughs> Blue. And I bought an, more yarn for another pattern in that same collection, which is the Esther, the Esther jacket by Petite Knit. It is an all over textured cardigan, and I was informed today by Felicia that she has she's coming out with the pullover version. So I bought yarn for the cardigan version, but she is also releasing the pattern of the the pullover, so I'm excited about that. And I am using 
some of the suggested yarn, which is the Isay or Jensen yarn. It's 100% pure new wool. Um, it is a little rustic, I think. I'm fine. It I is. don't have any itch factor. With it kind of reminds me a little bit of tuku wool, how tuku mm -hmm. wool feels. Yeah. it's. I wouldn't say it's not like let low be or anything. Mm -mm. Um, and then I'm holding it together with the alpaca too, which is 50% alpaca, 50% wool, which is super soft. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And how many yards are in there? 250. So it's more of a lace weight. So I think the suggested yarn combo is the Jensen yarn with, remind me, the silk mohair. Silk mohair? Oh, okay. Um, it was beautiful. Yeah. So Felicia helped me pick that out. And Another black sweater. I know. You and hubby are going to have matching black sweaters. I know. It's just, it's beautiful. It's all over textured knits and pearls that make these diamond shapes. And obviously you'll put in a picture. And I just think... I love cardigans, so I want another cardigan in my life. I did notice, though, when I looked at pictures of projects on Ravelry, that the little swatches that people were showing that they had done so far, the gauge looked loose to me. And I didn't read the notes. I don't know if the gauge was actually off or if it was met. they met the suggested gauge, I think, which is 16 stitches over 4 inches. But I do have a friend who has cast on already who went down a needle size and typically doesn't. Mm -hmm. So I think I might, because my garment is my swatch, I think I might just cast on with a uh, 3.5 millimeter, which is a four, a US four. Is that right? I don't know. I think that's right. <laughs> uh, so. Who's the designer again? Who did you say? <laughs> Petite Knit. Oh, it is Petite Yeah. Okay. So the Norma is by My Favorite Things Knitwear. The Esther Jacket is by Petite Knit. It is an Aran weight, you know, top down, knit flat, cardigan 10 sizes and nine and a half inches of e positive ease nice so, yeah it's just it's very classic and oh my gosh when felicia showed me the pullover i thought okay so i have a very 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 pale pink i have a double i think it's a double sunday and the matching mohair and i think i'm going to make the pullover version in that very very light oh, pink wow. that would be beautiful so that'll be beautiful that it really show the the texture yeah show off the texture so yeah. love that yeah so I have one acquisition that I don't actually have here with me and I do talk about it quickly in my Vogue Knit Live recap with Pat <laughs> <laughs> um, I told Pat you're gonna become a YouTube star <laughs> <laughs> it's funny uh, so at Vogue Knit Live uh, I really didn't intend on buying anything and because uh, I have so many I love to purchase here from pick up every stitch and I have so many um, you know, your cubbies sweaters, are full. My cubbies, my cubbies are, are full. Are full. <laughs> my cubbies are full. So I have a full collection right now. So I bought that little jelly pop nylon chainette, that one little tiny thing, uh, bullet skein of it. But then I couldn't resist. The last day, Sunday, uh, I went by the Unit uh, booth, which is in Toronto, owned by Claudia Quintanilla. Mm -hmm. E U E W E. Mm -hmm. E W E. Like a female sheep. Knit. Yes. Yes. And uh, they were handing out card like discount. You could get a discount on the a pattern, mm -hmm. and you could get um, a discount on a kit if you bought it that day. And uh, I was first ooey and awing over all of her children's designs. So um, she actually Claudia gifted me a couple of the children's patterns, but there was one specific one that I wanted, so I purchased that one. And I kept seeing women that weekend wearing this beautiful yoked sweater that was um, had beads in it but mm. not a lot of beads like just a few like you almost didn't notice them and then I realized it was a Claudia Quintanilla design and it's called Azucena is that how you say that uh, where is it Azucena <laughs> and um, so I just I bought a kit I bought a Le Garçon there were three different yarn variation kits but the one I got the kit is uh, will be the main color is black with pale pink color work and pale pink little teeny tiny like seed beads, maybe bigger than seed beads. But uh, the women in the booth were wearing the different variations and it was just so beautiful. Mm. I'll insert a picture. Yeah. And so I bought the kit um, and they didn't have any more there, so they're shipping it. Mm. But then I did get an email shortly after Vogue Knit Live saying that Le Garçon, they sold so many kits that it'll take until March to make my yarn, which is oh, fine. Wow. So I don't have the yarn yet, but I can't wait. And then I just found out that Claudia is doing a knit-along for that sweater. And so I hope I get my yarn by then because maybe I could throw that in my 
Q. It's not as complicated. It's just color work yolk. It's not as complicated as, you know, the rest of it's stuck in it. So maybe. But that's my acquisition. That's it. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's really beautiful. So, favorite things? I already did mine. Oh. Mine was the Aqua by Kim Hargraves. It kind of went out of order. Oh, okay. And the Barocco Wizard, which was kind of an acquisition and um, a favorite thing. So cool. you go. Okay. So my favorite thing is this book Yay. by Summer Lee. You know, her name is Summer Lee Lee. Anyway, hmm. yeah. So um, it's called The Sock Project, and I pre-ordered it on Amazon. Colorful, cool socks to knit and show off. And everyone knows I love Summer Lee. I love her aesthetic. I, um, she has a free pattern called School of Sock. I can't remember the name of the actual. It's, just, it's a vanilla sock, so if you need to or want to learn how to knit socks, I highly suggest downloading that pattern. And I absolutely love her book. It's, it's cool because if you listen to her podcast, so her podcast is called OK Knit. And it's kind of reinvented. She started again, I don't know what it was called before, Summer Lee Design Co. or something. So there are the old episodes, but her newer episode, episodes are called um, OK Knit. And, in, you know, when I'm, I actually read the book, I actually read the text, and you really can hear her voice come through. She has a funny sense of humor. And, yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was like listening to Summer talk to me. So I really liked that. And I thought it was super readable very interesting lots of really great information in here you know ev everything from just kind of knitting basic vanilla socks to you know complicated lace and color work and just suggestions for knitting those types of socks which is nice um yeah so she just you know she has a great aesthetic she talks a lot about the different kinds of yarn uh, that she likes to use she also kind of organized the book in such a way that like this is my favorite heel so i'm going to go i'm going to teach you my favorite heel and then teach you um my my least favorite heel out of five heels so i think there's like five heels and different kinds of toes and different cuffs and afterthought and forethought and why she likes one over the other so i thought it, i read i actually read the book so, That's fun. Yeah. So the first half of the book is kind of, um, you know, all about socks. And then the second half of the book are a bunch of patterns. So I don't know how many patterns are in here. A lot. There are a lot of patterns in here. Oh, 25 patterns. So I thought it was well worth uh, however much money I paid. It wasn't much. Um, yeah, it was published by Abrams. And she has a cute podcast where she talks about how she got a book deal and why she turned down a book deal and why she decided to knit uh, to, to write this one at this time um, 25 patterns five different heels cuff down socks toe up socks tips on sizing and fit and just um, also a good section on color choosing color and color combinations and how she goes about doing that and yeah I don't know I just thought it was it's a super book and I highly recommend it so yeah. Nice. Yeah, if you're a sock I wish knitter. I was a sock knitter. If you're, you know, a beginning sock knitter, I think it's a great book. If you're a more experienced sock knitter, there's definitely things in here to learn. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's great. my favorite thing. Nice. I love yeah. it. By the way, I think the viewer who um, found the copy of the Kim Hargraves book, mm -hmm. I think her name was Florence. So thank you, Florence. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so nice. I think that's it, right? Yep. Oh, we wanted to talk about Michaela's vest. Oh. We'll insert a picture. Yes. So we shared. I love it. Michaela <laughs> is a, a thrifter and she furnishes her home. She has a great Instagram. Uh, we'll put it in the show notes where she talks about thrifting for her home decor and thrifting her clothing. Mm -hmm. And she, she's wearing this sweater today, this vest. And I said, where did you get that? That's so cute. And it was her grandfather's vest. It's in a brown. Oh, insert a picture. And then there's felted letters that say whatever. And I thought it was purchased like yeah. that. And she just told us that she had her grandfather's vest and wasn't really wearing it and didn't want to get rid of it. And so she used her yarn scraps and a cat hair brush and <laughs> a needle felting mm -hmm. kit. And she 
felted these letters herself and stitched them on, right? You stitched them on? No, just, or you just felted, felted them, them on. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, okay. Oh, wow. She yeah, felted, felted them right them on there. On. It's so It's so cute. cute. Yeah. Like, I would buy one. Yes. It's I really would totally cute. buy one, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We love Michaela. Yeah. And we are going to maybe, hopefully, next week film. We've been wanting to film an, a set intro yeah. and outro. And so I don't have to like choose pictures every time. It'll be the same intro and outro no matter what video. It's going to be super cute. It is. Yeah. It was Jonna's idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think it's going to be. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're going to do an all day shoot next week and, and do this intro. The intro is like a minute long at the longest and mm -hmm. the outro is maybe a minute too. So yeah, I'm excited. Less. Yeah. It'll be really fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So we're excited about that. All right. That's it. Yep. So, um, as usual, comment. We love your comments. Uh, like the video, the algorithms, you know, it definitely helps to like. Subscribe. You know one thing, we're, we're at, we're over 15,000. Um, wouldn't it be fun to get to 20,000? It would be really fun. We definitely usually, within a few weeks, have 20,000 views. If every viewer subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it would be like overnight. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So help us get to 20,000. That's a big ask. Maybe by the summer. On my computer, I want to say, and on my TV. So my dad and I share a YouTube, and he likes to watch all kinds of crazy stuff, cooking and sailing and all kinds of stuff. Mine are primarily knitting and some sewing. So you can, and I don't know if it's something I downloaded, but you can categorize. So if you're worried about subscribing and then, oh, I have all these subscriptions, they will... YouTube will categorize your subscriptions. So I can just click on knitting and then I've got all my new knitting content and he can click on sailing and all his new sailing content. So there, you know, if you're worried about subscribing. And subscribing, it sounds like it costs, like if you subscribe to oh, a right. magazine, no, it costs money. It's free. You just, right. you, just you know, subscribe. That's how they populate your homepage with your subscriptions. Right. And they yeah. know what you like yeah. and you don't have to turn the notifications on. No. Mm -mm. You know, so then you're not going to get all these notifications. So no, anyway. do us a favor and yeah. subscribe. That would be so fun. <laughs> that would be amazing. You'd like make our day. Yeah. Make our month. Our month. Make our year. Our year, right? <laughs> um, that's from a show, right? Yeah. I don't know. Friends? <laughs> no. Um, cheers. It was so cute. We were setting up and there was a customer in the store and Felicia said, they have a, they have a podcast. And they're really, I don't know what she said exactly. They're famous or they're really well known <laughs> really or popular. something. It's funny. Yeah, really popular, she said. Yeah, it was really cute. I was like, Gosh. It was so was funny crazy. when I went to my daughter's house because I, <laughs> when I was there last week, I volunteered to take the kids to school and pick them up from school. And it's so cute because as soon as they come out, they go, Grandma! And they all <laughs> run to me. It's adorable. But my grandson specifically, every single person we see says, my grandma's a YouTuber. My grandma's a YouTuber. My grandma's a famous YouTuber. <laughs> my grandchildren do not do that at not all. Not that famous. You know, there's know. people with millions of so people. But anyway, it's funny. really funny. They're impressed by me. They definitely think I'm cool right yeah. now. For now. Yeah. Anyway, so share also. Share with yeah. your knitting friends, please. We love that. Uh, we hear so much like, oh, my friend told me about you. We mm -hmm. love that. We do have merch. Um, we might change <laughs> that eventually. Yes. Um, needs a needs a face. Did you see Pat was wearing our T-shirt mm -mm. when we did the Vogue Net Live video? Yeah, mm -mm. so she's advertising our merch. Oh, cute! And uh, use our twice sheared sheep affiliate link. Yeah, we do get a little kickback. We would love that. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, nope, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. See you next time. Oh, I just hit it. <laughs> did I touch my mic? Oh just, gosh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. So it's a really simple, beautiful dis <laughs> Okay, take three. You know, of all the places I could tap my body, why do we tap on the mic? And, uh, oops, <laughs> I just touched my mic again. <laughs> Thank you, Michaela. She, like, gives us little hand signals when we do that. I'll, I'll tell you after what I, what I do. You tell me now. Oh, you mean not on camera? Yeah. <laughs>